got a box plate back plate on the back. It's actually got a rib rig. I need some shanks for it, but whatever. Uh, I want to make it more versatile. This adapter plate, if I buy it online, is fifteen hundred bucks delivered to my door. So we're uh, cut this one up and make one ourselves. Let's get kicking. There's the tractor, no bucket. Here's your bucket. Adapter plate we built. Uh, that was some yellow that I had laying around. Just something to cover up the steel until I can get this thing cleaned and sandblasted painted. The new version of these case loaders has gray wheels, gray bucket and stuff. They have some gray other parts and I think they look pretty badass. Here's the plate that attaches to the tractor. We actually tacked up everything and we cut it off uh, trimmed and tacked everything into place while it was still on the tractor. We never took it off. That way the spacing of this thing stays the same, the angles, we could make sure everything was square, that it hit the stops where it was supposed to hit it, all that stuff. Uh, these are going to come off. <clears throat> we're still in the process, obviously we're going to pop those off. Uh, those were to make sure that these things stayed square. Nice 3 inch big gusset on the inside here, two smaller ones on the outside, same on both sides. So. More than likely, the plate that I bought will fail before uh, the welding on those brackets will fail. Uh, I had my buddy Al, that's uh, Al with TZ, uh, he did the welding on this. The guy's a phenomenal welder, just beautiful welds. We'll do a close up of them right now. See some of Al's welding here. Stuff looks nice. Do a couple passes there, make sure everything is real strong, fully welded on the inside. The way we cut it, we ended up having to clearance this because the bottom of the arm comes through here and up here as well. The top of the arm has to fit through there. Here's the gusset plate. We just inset it so we could get a full weld here, full weld there. It's fully welded on the back side in both places, three sides, so nice strong gusset. That's on both sides. Sandblaster was just here, got this thing knocked down, and I found some new paint. Oh, that doesn't really look different on camera. That's nuts. There's a better view. There, I got that color versus the bright yellow. That should match a little better. I'll paint it up. I think that matches a little bit better. Time to get this thing hooked up. Welcome, kids, to Adam's dirty ass classroom. Actually, my office. It's actually clean. Anyways, here's the back side of the plate. Okay, here's the pedestal. Okay, here's your bolt. Okay. Have it. Have it. Um, <clears throat> anyways, so your lab lever that would go on the that it cut that goes up and down and goes down to your pin right your pins down here right pushes your pin up and down said lever is a slightly wider or narrower than this pedestal so when you put that washer on here that's on there it tightens down up against the pedestal and it never pushes on said light lever so to remedy you know you got there and then there's a nut goes on here like this and then there's a spring that goes around it another washer another nut okay when you tighten this nut down it's supposed to put more pressure on the spring it's supposed to put more pressure on the lever here and it's supposed to make it so that that lever will sit up and down on it sit on its own and it doesn't flop down all the time which is the issue so what I've done is I took this all out and I got a bigger washer that fits over this pedestal, a three quarter inch washer. So then now it's putting pressure on said lever, smaller washer, then you're not, you know, then you got your spring will push on all that. So now that bigger washer slides over the pedestal, it's pushing on, on the lever. Problem solved. 
All right, there's a shot down in there to get, see what I mean? So this goes around a pedestal and there's a washer under the spring. Well, that washer hits the pedestal before it's actually touching the lever. So when that happens, you don't get any pressure and need oh. But I did this one, tighten that spring up. Now it stays on its own all the way up on its own. All right, washer, nut underneath, whatever. Spring, washer, another nut. Okay, my solution here is this. This is a bigger, it's like a three quarter inch washer and it slides over that pedestal. So then now this will be getting pushed on by the spring and I'll apply pressure to the back of the handle and our uh, floppy handle will be solved. You call this sucker right here, you call that Viagra, okay? That's gonna make that thing stiff. Voila, finished product. I really like this gray. Uh, I foresee myself eventually trying to get all the asphalt and stuff off this bucket, sandblasting it, painting the bucket gray as well. Um, you can kind of see over here all this tar and stuff. Uh, I think we're gonna hose this sucker down with some like diesel fuel or whatever and try and get some of that hosed off with the high pressure, high pressure washer. Uh, but yeah, you can see the, the thing here. So this is the cut we made. This, this is the original bracket that fit right here, down to here. You can see the cut we made, straight cut, shoot, right along there. And then we made, we lined it out, made sure it looked just like this, so it fit right over that. And you can see that that piece is actually still right here. So this guy here would fit right into there. Um, so that gave us two flat planes to work with so that we wouldn't change bucket trajectory or the bottom of the bucket so it sits where it's supposed to sit. There's a little knob up there that you know they, they line up when you know you got your level bucket. So that'll all stay the same. Everything's clearanced. I had to move these uh, hoses over here around a little bit, but that's not a big deal. That didn't take much. Just a little, uh, little forearm strength from being single for a couple of years, man. That thing is strong. Anyways, um, so yeah, gusted it in. I think it looks great. Um, up here, the leftover parts up here, I'm just going to leave those on there. I'm not sure what this bolt was for up here, why they had it in there. It's, it's pretty strong. We're going to leave it. It's a good anchor point. Um, we'll probably take and knock these corners off though. We'll take it just because I feel like that's just begging to, uh, cut yourself on one day, you know, they're shab. So, there she is. Well, well now, that's gonna wrap up the conversion to go to a uh, universal quick attach. So I can put pretty much any universal skid loader attachment on here. Obviously I don't have hydraulics hooked up for that yet, but that's just a matter of running them. Uh, capable, competent. As mentioned, there's YouTube videos, I'm sure that'll show me how to do it. Uh, went really well. Plate was like $350 shipped to me, something like that. Shopped around um, and found the best deal on it. There seems to be a bunch of different places between eBay, uh, PalletForce.com, places like that that all have a similar one. You could buy one specifically made for this, but they wanted like $1,500, I think. By the time I, you figure late my labor that I had the, my buddy Al Welding um, materials, which all we did was bought, the, bought that and a couple of washers to fix that one deal. Um, I think all in, I'm probably 600 bucks, so I saved half. And now I have a much more versatile machine, pretty jazzed about it. That plate looks pretty beef, so I think we're going to be just fine with that. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like. Uh, if you want to see me do my most excellent work, please subscribe. Here, 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 here. Something like me, Kim, me, Kim. Comment, you know.
Negative, positive, tell me I'm a dipshit. Tell me you think I'm handsome. See how the next one.